Well, hey there. Wanted to give you a special thanks for following my channel, following this quest of bringing proper 7.3 power stroke information in a way that it should be presented and having some fun. So I hope you've had a very Merry Christmas and also have a very, very happy New Year's. Thank you very, very much. Well, hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen, and today's Tech Talk is in the studio because Christmas weekend, the shops are all on low mode for heat. So, over the last uh, week, week and a half, you know, the old cold weather comes sliding on in, and telephone calls also start coming in, and vehicles start showing up and questions start being asked. So we're going to hit down on a few of those. Once again, I know a lot of you are experienced. Some of you are new 7.3 owners. So be patient, as I always ask. It'll get interesting as we go here. Uh, first off, let's plug in the truck. Maybe you don't watch the weather, I watch the weather, but they definitely did not make it a mystery that it was going to get uh, very, very cold. So plug your trucks in, folks. Um, I don't expect you to do what I do, but I've had great success over all the years of owning a 7.3, and I know some of you can't do this, but at 20 degrees, they just get plugged in all the time. I mean, I, they sit the whole weekend plugged in. You might say, hey, that's expensive on the electric bill, but I'm here to tell you, it saves on the seals, it saves when you start the engine up, it just saves on everything, the wear and the tear, the oil is already warm, the fluid is, uh, or radiator fluid, the coolant fluid is already warm. It, it just saves so much, I mean, just, it's amazing how you can eliminate leaks in a 7.3 by just keeping it plugged in all the time. But I know I'm asking for a lot because some, you know, the budgets are tight for some people, but at least try to get the thing plugged in uh, four hours to six hours before you decide to go anywhere. You can just get a simple plug in into the wall, set the old timer, and while you're sleeping, it'll just kick in. When you get up, you can just go out there and fire up a truck, and you won't, uh, you know, kill the whole neighborhood off with uh, white and black smoke. And uh, once again, it does save on the seals. But anyways, uh, next thing on the list uh, here, staying in that realm, if you start her cold using the glow plugs, don't throw it in drive or throw it in first and immediately take off. Let her warm up. Let that engine warm up a little bit so the oil can get running through the motor, doesn't starve the turbocharger bearings, doesn't starve the uh, high pressure oil pump uh, with the weight of that oil trying to be pushed through into the injectors. Uh, saves on the injector O-rings that hold the oil into the top part of the head. Saves yourself a lot of hassle, so let's just not be running out there starting it, you know, okay, geez, I'm going to be late for work and, you know, take off. Give yourself an extra 15, 20 minutes. Get her, get her nice and warmed up. This last week, we seen a rash of trucks that had non-working glow plug systems. Don't. <laughs> Whatever you do hot wire a switch from your dash over to the glow plug relay and flip her on and take a guesstimate on how long it should be on. Out of three trucks, two of them have to have their heads pulled. Why? Because the glow plugs were left on too long. The glow plugs were old and what happened was is that they mushroomed on the end. So you, we can't even pull them out. 
you can sit there and turn all you want, but you got two things going on. Number one, you could bust the end of the glow plug off, so you're going to take the damn head off anyways. Or number two, as you're turning it, all those shavings from the bottom of that glow plug all falls down into the cylinder. And of course, you fire up the truck and you got all those little pieces of metal. You get the point. It's not a good idea. If you got a problem with your glow plug system in your 7.3, you, you got to go through and figure out where the problem is. Uh, sometimes it can be just as simple as a stuck solenoid relay. You just go out there with a little hammer and just kind of tap it a little bit and then it starts working again. This does happen actually quite a bit. But either which way, you got a glow plug situation, glow plug problem where it's not igniting and your light isn't coming on in the dash. It, don't be rigging it. it. It's just a bad idea. It'll cost you in the end, I guess, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I am not a big fan of biodiesel by any means. And I know there's certain parts of the country that you have no choice. They're going to throw it in the fuel. A couple videos back, I explained the fact that I use a premium diesel. There's many benefits in it. You can go back and watch that. But either which way, the premium that I use does not have, and I verified this directly with the company, uh, specifically Co-op, and there's another company too that we use around this area that also has guaranteed us that their premium doesn't have any biodiesel in it. But anybody that's using a grade of basic diesel that has 20, sometimes 30% biodiesel in it, you need to figure something else out during the winter time. First off, I don't care what time of the year it is, it messes up the injectors, messes up your fuel system, but especially in winter time, if you don't plug your truck in or you don't have it in an environment where it's just sitting outside in that freezing cold weather, that biodiesel gels up and you just are not going to be going anywhere. It's not a good idea. Seen a lot of that this last previous week. Phone call rings. Well, geez, you know what kind of fuel you're putting in there. You know, you always got that list of stuff that you got to ask because you never get the whole story ever on everything. But uh, some of these people are like, oh, yeah, well, you know, it saves us money, you know, running that biodiesel. Well, not anymore, does it? Um, here's <laughs> one situation uh, cracked pistons. Running biodiesel, he knew that it was gelling up on him, but instead of going down and getting some 911 to pour into the tank to thin her on out, he figured that he would go in and grab the old lawnmower gas, dump two gallons of that in there. Yeah, that cost him three cylinders. You can accidentally, in regular good weather put gasoline in a diesel it's it's not going to grenade the thing all right um it's not a good idea don't get me wrong but if you ever find yourself with a half a tank of gas and for some odd strange reason you pulled up to the regular petrol and you dumped five ten gallons in there and you have a half a tank of diesel just fill the rest of up with diesel, run her lightly, and every time you use up a quarter of a tank, just keep on putting more diesel in, more diesel in, and actually it won't cause much of a damage. During the winter time, though, that'll dry out them cylinders quite, uh, quite nasty, and uh, the whole idea between the octane gas and diesel, you know, setane, octane, they're there's a difference there, and she'll dry out the cylinders in the middle of winter time. You'll end up really messing up your motor by putting gas as a uh, thinner into your diesel. So, bad idea. Seen one of those once again this, this previous week. Just bad, 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 bad. Uh, ether. Starting a diesel, any diesel, with ether. 
sometimes there's a need. Nothing wrong with it. Shh. Oh. <laughs> The problem is, is when we go out there and we're and I mean, you know, limbs are falling off the trees because <laughs> there's so much poison in the air. A little squirt, just keep her at that. Don't, don't, don't be hosing down the whole engine with ether. You know, the half a can of ether down into the air filter. You've gone way too far, and you will cause problems. I mean, cracked pistons, cracked rings, blown head gaskets. I mean, there is just a plethora of stuff when you get carried away with ether. And once again, I know I'm talking to a lot of experienced people, but there are some new folk here that uh, are joining the community and have never had a diesel. So heed these warnings please you'll have a beautiful life with your 7.3 power stroke diesel if you can just get away from some of these items here and not do it now the last thing for the week that we ran into and uh, it's still sitting in the shop because uh, they're considering over the four-day holiday weekend what they're gonna do so we'll hear tomorrow or the next day of what the final decision is. But young guy, full of the old piss and vinegar, once that diesel, you know, that black smoke, well, I don't have a problem with that. I don't like it, but your vehicle, you do what you want with it. So this is what has happened. He just bought the truck previous owner benounced to him unbeknownst to him basically didn't know he had installed some weird doctor diesel pro stupid modular uh, actually this is the first time I've ever seen one but I seen it right away as soon as I got up on top of the uh, engine to take a look at what was going on but the uh, truck wouldn't start he says he ran it, it was just fine he installed an edge tuner two weeks ago said well you know I had to do some farting around and talking with the company and stuff like that because it wasn't quite working right and I was getting check engine lights and I was having all these problems finally he went out there and the thing just wouldn't even start but one of these Dr. Diesel Pro modulars. So the point is do not stack tuners. Do not stack programmers. Now this was a situation where he didn't know, but you should, when you get a new diesel truck, meaning that when you buy a used new truck to you is go through it inch by inch find out what the previous person did ask questions before you buy it but either way go through and find out what the previous people rigged up you know when you got wires kind of like dangling here going there and going here and going there you got to find out what they did it shouldn't be like that. A good 7.3 power stroke should not have wires being jumped from here to there to here to there. It's a telltale sign that there's a problem, but when you find a big box laying down in the uh, valley, and you might not know, but you need to start asking questions about that box, pick that box up or whatever it is, all these extra connections and find out where they go and look at whatever the model number is and look it up on the internet. Well, here was some half-butt programmer that diddled with the ICP and diddled with the IPR voltage and then it went over to the MAP sensor and through the, all these years with the heat of the engine and that modular laying right in the valley of the motor, well, it overheated it and kind of fused all the wires together, but on top of that, he installed the edge tuner and 
well, that messed everything up. Uh, the Edge Tuner was trying to compensate for everything that that little modular was doing. So be damn careful when you're putting on performance items and putting in programmers and putting in tuners that somebody else hasn't done something before or left it half-assed hooked up. Got to make sure that what you're doing is fresh and remove all the garbage that the previous people put in there to make sure that you have an enjoyable life with your 7.3 power stroke. So I hope you find the cold weather information something that'll help you and informative and you take it easy and you have a good day.